Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of CA Overwatch. Uh, as always, I am your co-host, Spencer, back this week. I know you guys had a little special episode with just Chris, <laughs> but now you get the both of us. And with me, as always, is... Chris, thank you for listening to the last episode. I tried to carry that by myself, but I'm super happy to have yeah. Spencer back. Happy to, to be back. a little debate. No, no, it was good. It was a good episode. I listened to it, and you brought up some pretty good points. Um, yeah. So, obviously, I mean, you brought up some pretty good points, and I think you did predict a Toronto Defiant win. And, of course, we ended yeah. up getting a Toronto Three Defiant o. win. So, Three our o. first 3 of the season. So, yeah, exactly. Chris, let's just jump right into this. For those of you who don't know, we played the Vancouver Titans in the first match of the June or the Summer Showdown, whatever it's called. And we're already doing better than our previous one. We are 1-0. <laughs> uh, last, the May Melee, we went 0-3. We are 1-0. I'm uh, very excited for the upcoming two matches because we ended up getting our first 3-0 of the season versus the Vancouver Titans. Chris, what do you think was a difference maker between this time we played Vancouver, i.e. winning 3-2 in a one-sided affair, versus the last time we played, sorry, the last time we played Vancouver, i.e. nail biter 3-2 finish going down to, you know, map five? Teamwork. Teamwork, Spencer. Okay. And I'm, I'm not going to necessarily say it's specifically attributed to uh, Namlock or any certain person, yeah. but it was teamwork. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of tank teamwork that was going on, and there was a lot of interplay in between the roles. There's a lot of teamwork in between, especially especially our supports, our DPS and supports on tanks. Yeah. I just remember, just remember, Kareev hitting those six-man... Uh, nades and five man nades in our first matchup and having no follow up with it. There was a lot more coordination this time around, and um, mm -hmm. you'll probably talk about it later. But you know the halt rock creations, you know yeah. different halt combos. Those were absolutely amazing. So I think that that was one thing that for me really stood out. Yeah, I was gonna say I actually should have mentioned this earlier, but for again uh, a, a big reason why this game was I want to say a big reason it was successful, but a big reason why this game was one to watch was because it was the debut. Of Numlocked, our yeah. our brand new tank, um, playing from the UK. Actually, I didn't realize that playing on a hundred yeah. plus ping, which is which is interesting. I think he had a really good showing. I think we had talked about this previously. I think that I never thought that Beast was a bad main tank. In fact, I actually think he's kind of a pretty decent one. It was yep. simply that the pieces didn't fit well together. Like I think on paper. If you gave me the ops right now, like who's a better main tank mechanically, I, I still think Beast is. I know some people were saying like, oh, this is yeah. what it's like to have a good main tank and some people in the community are getting really hyped up, but I don't think that Numlock was leaps and bounds better than Beast. I actually think on Arisa yeah. mechanically, Beast is better. And I mean, I went to the stats labs just to check it out. Beast still is in the upper echelon of tanks in terms of damage and final blows and all those sort of statistics from both a Reinhardt and Arisa perspective. And Numlock was actually pretty low on that. Um, and I think that part of that is the ping and I don't want to put too much weight into this because I mean, again, it's one game, like, yeah. it's a smaller sample size. The point I was just trying to make was, I don't think that this was a obese has been so bad and Nomok is so much better than him. This is how the team performs. I think this was a case of, dude, you're right. It just, the team just seemed to fit so much better. And I think that that goes down to just the strengths that Numlock has over Beast are what this team was lacking. And that's like decisiveness and shot calling and being very vocal about the halts because, Dude, that was like the first time I've seen a Halt accretion all season or a Halt yeah. Flux all season. I forgot what it was like to see, you know, Nevix go up for the Flux and all of a sudden Numlock would boot. Like, yeah. I, like, Nev I, we've ragged on Nevix a little bit this year in terms of how I thought he's been a little bit disappointing. But he, a big reason why I think his ults and his were not that good. And, and, and I mean, you could tell he wasn't hitting his Halt accretion combos. But all of a sudden, Numlock goes in the lineup and he's hitting four or five man fluxes. I know he had that one whiff a little bit on Ilio as well. Yeah, yeah. But at least he baited way. out the transcendence. But I just felt like his ults were so much more consistent. And not even just that, I yeah. also noticed this from a Blizzard perspective. We noticed that on a Temple of Anubis where Zik was hiding in the corner and he was just waiting. And then as soon as Numlock comes up and they turn the corner and the people come out of spawn and then boom, he throws the Blizzard and Numlock sucks four of them into it. And that was one of the reasons why we were able to snowball that point into victory. And I was like, man, I, we, I missed that. Like that was something this team never had. So I do think that Beast was and still is a really good main tank in this league, especially mechanically. I think that like Numlock just brings something to the table that this team was missing. Yeah, yeah and I just want to be uh, real clear, just clear. Uh, just a quick uh, talk about Beast. Uh, Plat Chat was kind of going down. I'm saying it was the worst part of the team yeah. uh, before. And 
I just think I just think I disagree, and I don't know why people don't really consider like rookie things being rookie things. But you know, he still is a rookie. Yeah, he, you know, he was brought into the team to grow with people, and he clearly wasn't uh, growing in the way that they wanted to because people on the team weren't the types of people that coaching staff thought they were. Yeah. So he kind of had it out bad. But I still think there's a good path for him to be a great starting player in the future. Yeah. Uh, I think if you pair him with a different off tank other than Nevis, and that's not the, again, that's not against Nevix. It's just Nevix yeah. is a very quiet cerebral player. Uh, you know, that's, that's not news to anybody. And you, you, if you put less of the shot calling and the leadership role off of beast, and maybe you have like a, a more confident, yeah. more vocal off tank alongside him, you can see some success because again, statistically beast is still, He's one of the only players on our team who is in who like so when you go to stats lab and you go to the team fights, you know, for like final blows and death or damage per ten minutes, right? You want to be that top right section. You want to be like above average in both final blows as well as damage yeah. per ten. He's one of the only players on our team who on you know, all of his roles in the sense that Reinhardt and Arissa is above average in all those categories. And maybe that's because he, he just runs in and dies and he's able to put a bunch of damage before he dies, maybe. Um, but I think more of it just has to do with the fact that Numlock is just, man, he's, he's, you know, he's been in the league for such a long time. He's been a contender for such a long time. Yeah. He just has that experience and he's just a more vocal player. Yeah. And that doesn't mean he's a I better wanna... player. It just means a more vocal one. Yeah, exactly. Um, I also want to say that, you know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, Hey, this isn't a big win three Oh yeah, it's good, but it's against, it's against Vancouver. And I'd actually argue that it's actually, you know, it is a good win because completely agree what i will say is that you know shockwave and dalton they were not looking like soldiers out there they were looking i think they're great DPS. pretty crisp pretty clean they're really good and every yeah and every single game that this vancouver team plays they're getting better and better yeah they're, they're i also don't think their tank better. line's bad i think ksa and shredlock are a decent tank line. i think the, I personally i think the the issue with the and i mean we saw it on the stats the issue with the vancouver titans right now is their support line kareev just yeah. crushed him like kareev just oh. crushed him um, so when you have like a, a your when your DPS lineups are and your tank lineups are pretty similar, and then the support lineup is the difference I think between our two teams. Like that's why we ended up with a three a three zero in the way that we did is just because I think our supports are just uh, noticeably better than theirs. Like if I'm if I'm Vancouver, I would have signed a Fox from Envy, you know, two weeks ago, yeah. three weeks ago. I think they need another player like that. But uh, the the one thing I want to say is why this was such a big win is I don't think I don't want to look too much on their raw damage stats. Like obviously we hey we saw it sure for logics again. Logic can pop off and trace. Already know that. Surefor had himself an incredible game, but these players are going to look a little bit better when they play against worse teams, right? Like I expect them to be good, and I don't want to just look into that and just be like, "Well, we're going to carry over to better teams." But I think it's important to look at how the team played. It's not. It's not that we beat Vancouver three zero. It's how we beat them three zero. And I think a big reason yeah. was again the ability to hit the Halt Rock combos, the ability to hit the Halt Flux combos, Halt Blizzard. It was a more decisive team. Uh, Zick, like Zick, was really, really no. Like I know he was new. It was a big issue with him on the echo. Like he was one of the worst echoes in the league in the May melee. If you look at his stats, it was really bad. It was his first time, and he was nervous. Zick's May looks so much better. Zick's yes. May looks so much better. I forgot. Like his walls were fantastic. Multiple times he was able to get a couple picks too. Like he was able to output damage and stay alive in fights, which was really important. The team played a lot better. It's not that they beat Vancouver 3-0 because they're not the first team to do that. It's it's yeah. how they beat them. I think that was so impressive and that gave me yes. so much optimism moving forward. Yeah, they beat uh they beat them in a fashion where Vancouver is playing well themselves. Um and I do want to say that one thing that I don't see a lot with Toronto that they were exhibiting was clutch moments. Uh you know, a classic example was Anubis B point when we yeah. were defending, we got to ninety seven percent cap, and we were, we were absolutely should have been dangled on there. We should have been full capped, but yeah. we didn't. We held it in there. We we pull off some really clutch moves with, um, with Cruz's immortality field, yep. uh, some numlocks plays uh, and Nevix's like um, primary fire. We they had some really good plays there, and that's something that we don't see a lot. So, uh, I I think I'm I'm pretty confident with us. Well relatively confident with us moving to, into the Atlanta game. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's good that you brought up Nevix because Nevix was somebody who I thought was a disappointment for this team. I thought he was, uh, I, I had a high hopes from going into the year. And frankly, especially as Sigma has disappointed me this year. His diva has been pretty good, but his Sigma has not been that great. You can go to the, the stats, back this up. It's just, it's been disappointing. I think Nevix, this is probably the best game that we've seen Nevix play all year. 
And I think that that's a big yeah. reason why we looked as dominant as he was. Again, we can give the uh, respect to maybe you have someone like Numlock who's more vocal. Maybe that's why was, Netflix was able to open up. But Netflix's average, average damage per 10 minutes before this game was, I think, 9.5K per 10 and his final blows were seven and a half in the previous game he went up to 10.7 K damage per 10 minutes and he went from seven and a half final blows to 11.7 that is such a significant increase and I understand that that's again you play Vancouver you're gonna you know when you win 3-0 you're gonna have better stats but that's a very substantial increase in like raw statistics, and that's the Nevix that I thought that we were signing when we got him in the offseason. If Numlock can unlock Nevix, I think that this is this is finally looking like a pretty good team moving forward. And then before we move on, because I know we want to get into previewing Atlanta and whatnot, um, yeah. Sure Four returned. So, Chris, give me your thoughts on Sure Four. The prom- the Captain Canada is back. Captain Canada is back where he rightfully belongs. Buddy, buddy, buddy. Give me your thoughts. I've been waiting to see that kill feed. That kill feed, you know that Surefire kill feed when you just see a yep. bunch of Ash logos and yep. Surefire on it. I've been waiting to see that, and I finally got my cake. Yeah, seeing those kill feeds just fill right up. The man is just—he's just so consistent. Yeah, that's what he is. He's a consistent guy. And you know what? It clearly the break did him good. Yeah, and now, I, I don't best... know. Sorry, keep going. No, I, and I don't know where agility is. What he's gonna do? What he's gonna? Well, then maybe this is just the the hero pool that he's not good at. He's not gonna play his hero pool. He'll, maybe he'll come back when Echo's more in the game and Zix yes. can't carry an Echo. Yeah. But which which I think would probably be the case uh, where Julius will come back. But you know, there has been speculation that he may not play again. I'm not sure about that because I still see Toronto Finds Twitter posting content with him. You know, posting Brady's like uh, Twitch feed, posting yep. like pictures of him. So I'm still confident that he hasn't left the team yet. No, I don't but, think he's left the team. I don't think he's left the team. No, no, at all. left the team. But I, I don't think we'll see him in the rest of this hero pool. Yeah. Okay. So I agree. So I, I think in terms of Surefort, I, I love seeing Surefort and Logics in the lineup. I've said for a long time, I thought that was our best DPS lineup, and we saw it on control, and it was really successful. Surefort is just such a good DPS player because of what he can do without requiring a lot of resources, right? I don't think yeah. his Ash is the best in the league in terms of his ability to click heads and, and get kills and whatnot. Like, I still. Like I, I think mechanically you could even argue maybe Logix is too. I think Surefour's ability yeah. to like take off angles safely and output damage and allow like the tanks to be aggressive and his DPS partner like Logix to be aggressive and require more resources while he just sort of sits back and does his thing. It's just a really valuable player to have because he's not very resource heavy. And um, I did like the fact that we finally saw the Widow Tracer sort of duel mm-hmm. that we uh, Adam had talked about on the show previously. Get the tube horn a little bit. We are right. Logic's in the tracer. Sure for the would love to see it. Um, the one thing that concerned me a little bit is I don't want to see Sure for Zick as much. I know Zick had a pretty good, a pretty good game. I think his May was really good. I don't think his tracer was that good. I understand that with Blizzard World you want it to run both, but I think if in the future if you're going to run tracer half, like I think tracer Ash is good enough that you could run it the full way. Like just play Logic's. I, I think I'd rather just see Logic's in there. Obviously, mm-hmm. if you want to run Anubis or something like that, where you want to run May pretty consistently, or if it's like a King's Row where it's like, no, May defense is really, really strong, um, then sure. But I I thought Zix May was good, but I, I do want to still see Logics in the lineup. I, his Tracer was okay, yeah. and it's nice that he's flexible enough. Like That's a good sign that Zix's flexible enough to play Tracer in the first place, but I still really think Logics is kind of our star player, and I, I want to see him and Surefour together. And just to agree with your final point, I think Agility says, I, I'm watching a stream, he's playing a lot of Genji, and he's playing a lot of uh, Echo. So I think that, that his role mm-hmm. right now is going to be practice Echo, practice Genji. Then I expect if this does become, like for instance, the Summer Showdown with no Hero Pools and Echo is meta, that's where I think you might see him. Or, yeah. depending on these Genji's buff, if Genji's meta, you'll definitely see him. I just don't think you're going to see him play to May again. I, I think those... Yeah. Those days are behind him. Yeah, no, no, I definitely don't. And I don't think uh, Genji is going to be meta. Neither do I. Uh, anytime soon. So He just got buffed. You never know. It? You never know. Crazier things have happened, but I agree. Like, this, this is secondhand talk. This is just me listening to other people talk about it. But uh, yeah. it just seems like when you have people like Doomfist that have you know, one-punch kill abilities and stuff like that that are on lower cooldowns, then... Well, Doomfist is really Genji's... good. I mean, his Doomfist is really good, too. So if Doomfist is meta... Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway... That's that's not the discussion we're supposed yeah. to hinder on. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say, Spencer, before we move on to previewing Atlanta? All I want to say was this is the first time that I've had, that I've been excited about this team since we went 3-2 versus Philadelphia. 
Yeah, now, exactly. Toronto fashion, give us hope, tear it away. So, I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up too high because Atlanta's going to be tough, but yeah. I'm probably going to get slapped. I'm excited. <laughs> so, what do you think about this Atlanta rain game, man? What, are, what are, How are we going to win? Like, everybody has the cards stacked against us. You know, I watch Plat Chat. They all vote for Atlanta rain on this game. Yeah. You, how are we going to win this? So I think it's tough. I think if this was actually another team, maybe like the LA Valiant or something, I think I actually might have predicted Toronto, to be honest. Um, yeah. I think people are sleeping on this franchise still a little bit. The issue is we know Atlanta's had our number all year. The first time they played us, they absolutely destroyed us. The second time they played us, they didn't destroy us, but they beat us 3-0. Like it, it wasn't like one of those close games where team fight yeah. goes here or there, we win. I think that mentally they might have an advantage over us. So it is hard to pick the fight, especially since I think that Atlanta is a better yeah. team. I will say this though. Atlanta has been on the downward spiral. There cl- seems yes. to be some, they have too many good DPS players between sharp Edison, baby Bay and Erster. So there might be some like internal discourse there where they're like, maybe they, where Ursus became a May one trick for some reason. And now it's just like randomly playing on, on like Anubis and whatnot. So it's possible I think that double shield actually suits them really well, especially Bat Zen, because they can run both Kodak and also Dogman, which does give their supports an advantage. The keys to victory, I think, is going to be getting the meta right. And if it is mm-hmm. an Ash Tracer meta, play Logix and Surefour. I, I generally think that Logix and Surefour going up against Baby Bay Edison can be better. I, yeah, I, I think that Logix is a better tracer than Edison or or even Urster for that matter. I mean, that might be a bit of a hot take, but I really like Logix as Tracer, and I think Surefour is just such a cerebral player that like he can outplay BBB on the Ash. I think that's more than possible. I think another thing is going to be Nevix needs to perform like he performed last week. He needs to hit exactly. those combos. He needs to hit those Halt Accretions, Halt Flux. Yeah. And he needs to continue to output damage and get final blows and be the Nevix that we thought he was going to be. Not much just needs to keep being vocal and being decided to being a shot caller. Same with Cruz. This team has looked a lot better with him in the lineup, and I, I Kareev's going to be Kareev. I'm very confident in him being a really good player. There's no doubt in my mind. So uh, the only reason I want to give this team hope is just because this is the – ignore the main melee for a second because it was Zick's first game, and Cherfor wasn't playing. There was a lot going against us in the main melee. This was the team that once we got Cruz, played the San Francisco Shock, and was really close – to beating them, right? Moth's three-man poop at the end. Like, very close match versus the San Francisco Shock. Yeah. And then took the LA Valiant, who now people have determined is a top six team in the league, apparently, to five matches where the two maps out of the three we lost were a hundred to not four, a hundred to ninety-nine cough maps in a row. Okay? Cruz has made a big impact in this lineup. I think Numbok's gonna make a big impact in this lineup. And if Surefor is playing and we have logics alongside him. This is a legitimate upset. The potential. This, this I think is. we can. How about you? Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Uh, I mean, look at like we I don't know. I, I feel like our our tank line's still a little bit outmatched, uh, with you know, those plays right there, uh, Gator Bookbo, stuff like that. Oh, okay. I think we're a little bit we're a little bit outmatched in that class. Uh so I think if there is a weakness that we have to make sure we account for, it's gonna be in our tank tank category. Yeah, Gator's wrist is so good. Yeah, like it's 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 really it's it's hard. It's hard. I think we actually are like it's a hot take to say our DPS is outmatched, but I think that our support's actually kind of there. It is is there? It could be out. It could outmatch their support. I mean, I I really think Kariv has like kind of popped off in the last couple of games here. Hey, any other meta Cruz- other than Bap- Baptiste Zen, I would totally agree with you. The only reason I said that is because if they have two flex supports playing. Where where like Cruz's Baptiste yeah, might not right. be as good as Codex, but sorry, continue. You might be right. You might be right. Yeah, I agree yeah, that Kariv's the best out of the four. Yeah, no, it's really it's really hard, and I I really I don't think I don't think Toronto should play Zek, and I don't think they will play Zek. I think they played Zek against Vancouver because it's Vancouver, and they it's an appropriate time to give them uh, room to maneuver and time to play against a uh, worse team, but against a better team. I'm just hoping they. I don't. I feel bad saying this, but I, I, I'm hoping they stick to. True for logics. You know, I think the May is viable. I think it depends on the map pool. Like I said, I think we played Zik because on Temple of Anubis, and you saw this with Atlanta and LA over the weekend. Like, like there's certain maps where May is still the best option. It's May Ash, right? You saw like yeah. in Temple of Anubis, people run May. She's really good on that map. I think if May uh, Kings Row defense, if May is viable, I actually think we will see Vi- Zik. And I think Zik's May was yeah. was a godsend compared to Agilities. I mean, pure output. Agilities had his moments, but 
He's yeah, very consistent. Yeah. His walls are really good. He, he impressed me a lot, especially compared to his last game. So I think we, we might see him again. I just, I agree. I think our best DPS lineup is sure for logics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, what's your prediction then, Spencer? What are you thinking? I, I think there's legitimate upset potential, but given the whole year and, and given our, you know, we're sick, we're zero and six against Atlanta in terms of map record. I, I can't really, I'll say three, one Atlanta. I think I can give us a map. I'm, I'm just, I honestly, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if, if we were able to pull this out like a three, two or something. Yeah. Like yeah, I generally exactly. think we can, especially if yeah. logics plays the whole time with sure. I, I think it, I think it's there too. Um, a lot is actually one of those teams though, that has done extremely well against uh, lower class teams like ours. Yeah. So it's really hard to say. It's not like um, they're really consistent with facing teams like ours. They're so, a good team. I, I am going to say a 3-1 as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually, I'm going to be honest, I would be happy with 3-2. Yeah. It, it was a relatively close 3-2. We still lost. But like, hey, you know what? It's okay. Oh, I th- but um, yeah. I, I think 3-1. Again, this is the most, the most optimism I've had for this for this franchise in a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I, I think that, the again, if Nev- Nevix performs, he's going to be the wild card. He's going to be the key. Uh, and I, I agree. Like I think that Zick, I, I've liked Zick. I, I just the final point I wanted to bring up, not really a point, just, I guess it's general Overwatch news, is that Kev's run to the LA Gladiators. And I just think it's really interesting with teams like Toronto and Vancouver looking at Tier 2 talent, and nobody of those two teams were able to pick him up. I don't know if that was a Kevster decision or if that was just for some reason the manager didn't want to play the buyout. not really sure what that was, but I don't mm-hmm. just keep your eyes up because if Kevster ends up popping off and being a really, really good player, like these organizations are going to have to take a look in the mirror. and Because it was a little bit disappointing to see us not really come out there and get like who could be a potential really good player, especially when we picked up someone like Zick. And, and that's something against Zick. I just, from everything I've seen and everything I've heard, like Kevster was the more highly touted prospect. So, yeah. I, it, man, Zick, prove me wrong, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, go out there, do your best. And if you got to play May, man, let's see you play it like the way you played it versus Vancouver. So, um, well, this is this one more itty bitty tangent. Like, I kind of. Like I know we have a little bit of insight in, into how how Toronto Defiant chooses their players in terms of their psychological profiling. Yeah, but I, like I wonder how you start to observe and wean down these players. You know, do you do you have like people just legitimately watching tier two like games? Do we have? Like maybe even an AI point, like combing stats or something. I, I bet like, you it's, it's people just watching tier two games, and you probably have like an interview with the player. And like you said, like they probably called up Zick and and uh, I actually the, the the coach of of Third Impact actually put out a big twit longer where he broke down like his mentality that went into signing a bunch of different players. Yeah. Uh, and sort of his thought process that went into it. And the, one of the cool parts is when he talked about Zick, like Zick, I didn't realize it, but Zick had previously retired. Like Zick hadn't played Overwatch in like a year going into this season. Okay. And he just talked about how how quick Zick could pick up things, but more importantly, how adaptable he was. Like he really listened to the coaching staff. And when he was like the coach was like, when I said change something, Zick would immediately implement it in his game, right? It wasn't one of those players who was stuck in his ways. He really took what the coaches said and would immediately try to implement it into this game. So I bet you that's one of the reasons why we like went after someone like that. But yeah, yeah. in terms of the scouting, I don't really have too well, much information. Like we can maybe bring somebody on uh, and talk to them about that. Wink, wink. Yeah, we'll see. But, um, but I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that's very interesting. Uh, just think that that makes sense why they bring him on for that reason because it's mid mid season. You need somebody who can adapt quick to things. Yeah. But yeah, w- with that, you know, I'd like to thank everybody for listening to today's video. Thank you. Thank if you. you liked it, smash that like button. If you disliked it, smash the dislike button. If you like our comment, feel free to possibly subscribe and uh, content. Comment on our stuff yeah. uh, if you like anything. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We now have audio only versions because people can, can finally stop asking us for that. Uh, yes, we are we finally there. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, thank you so much, Toronto Fine, for putting Sherfer back in the lineup. And I will see you guys next time. As always, enjoy. <laughs>